Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So let's take a look at my biological age versus my chronological age at the 51 month point of my NMN experiment using the blood test results that were taken in September of 2023. Let's very quickly take a look at the supplements I was taking during the time of this blood test. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, one gram a day, but only on a Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Trimethylglycine, TMG, 1.5 grams a day. Metformin, I'm back on 1,000 milligrams a day, 500 in the morning and 500 at night. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. That used to be 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. My last blood test showed I was above the sufficient range, so I've cut that back now, just 5,000 per day. Uh, and we'll see how that pans out at the next blood test. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms of the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams of the L3 and 8 version. High molecular weight, hyaluronic acid, 200 milligrams per day. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day, but only on the first, second and third of each month. Cursetin, the same, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know why I only take it three days a month, the link in the description below under my supplement list will take you to that particular video. Baby aspirin, 81 milligrams a day. Cert6 activator, 600, uh, sorry, 800 milligrams a day. DIM, I take 600 milligrams a day, and that's 200 uh, first thing in the morning, 200 around 11, 30, 12 o'clock uh, lunchtime, and then the remaining 200 with my metformin just before I go to sleep. And Glynac, which is uh, glycine and NAC, I take 800 milligrams per day. So that's it for my supplement stack. So the website I use to check my biological age using my blood test results is this, longevityadvantage.com. And if you want to use this, there is a link in the description below to that particular, or to this particular website. If you scroll all the, all the way to the bottom, it will show you the nine uh, blood markers you need to enter. You also need to enter your um, chronological age. You then click on next step. That next page will ask you for your email address and your name, and then they will email you your results within about two minutes, which is which is really good. So the last time I had a test was back in May of 2023. Some very disappointing scores there. You can see here my chronological age was still 59. My phenotypic age came back as 59.28. Uh, so an increase in age of 0 0.28, which is 0 0.28, which is very disappointing. I'll also put up here the definition of uh, phenotypic age. My DNA methylation age was 58.20. So my DNA methylation versus my chronological was a reduction in 0 0.80. So technically just a year under. So it's gone from uh, being 59 and my biological age is only 58. Very disappointing, as I said. If you remember in the last video, I checked my blood test results. And the only thing that was looked really different was my creatinine score. And then I remembered that I'd been taking creatine as a supplement and I'd been eating a lot of red meat, probably three, four, maybe five times a week. Um, what I then did was I entered the results. I did the test again, but I entered my creatinine results from six months ago when I wasn't taking um, creatine as a supplement and I was probably eating slightly less red meat, sort of a mix between red meat and salmon. Uh, and that returned a more favorable result, but I didn't, I didn't record that. Um, in the date in the database, you'll see that later in the spreadsheet. Um, <clears throat> so let's have a look at this latest uh, result, which I've got. My chronological age is still 59. My phenotypic age this time has dropped right down to 52.81, which is great. So my phenotypic age versus my my bio, my my chronological or my my birthday age is minus 6.19. So I'm just over six years younger, and my DNA methylation age came back as 52.04 which is good, that's that's um, about 52 and a half. My DNA methylation age versus my chronological age is now minus 6.96, so very close to seven. So a reduction in age of seven years, which is a fantastic result. So obviously I'm very happy that my biological age is now dropped now that my uh, creatinine is under control. 
I think having now stopped taking creatine and having reduced somewhat my red meat consumption and increased my chicken intake, that's had an effect on my creatinine and also my EGFR score. If you remember from the last blood test, my kidney function was always in the mild decrease bracket. Uh, it's now back in the normal range, which is obviously a good thing. Uh, we all want our kidneys to be functioning correctly. So if for some reason you don't want to or you can't take a blood test, you could always check out this website, biologicalage.com. They ask you a number of questions uh, and then they work out your biological age from that. And again, there's a link in the description below to this particular website. Uh, since I've started using this, they've always added more questions and more about diet and lifestyle, which is, which is also good. You can see here in May 2023, when I was 59 and one month, they said I was 49, which is great, 10 years younger. But if you remember when I used my blood test to work it out last time, I was only a year younger. So they're about nine years out, which is not too good. This time when I took the test on the 5th of September, I was 59 and five months and they said I was 49. So around 11 years younger. When you compare that to my blood test um, biological age, they're about four years out. So not fantastic, but then again, not, not a completely useless resource. Um, so technically, I'm four months older than the last test, but this website is saying I'm now one year younger than I was last time. Um, I think that might be down to answering the questions. Now I'm in the Philippines. One of the questions I answered says, I love my vocation, especially now I'm retired, as opposed to I really liked it when I was working in the Middle East. You can see at the bottom, there's a couple of comments, uh, pieces of advice, which I agree with this to a certain degree. It says breakfast is the most important meal of the day. They're talking about breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which is a marketing gimmick by a cereal company that wants you to eat their, their highly sugared, highly refined breakfast cereals, which is going to spike your insulin, which is something you don't want. And I'm guessing that when that crashes a couple of hours later, this same company will have a, a sugar laden snack for you to eat to make you think that you feel better, but you actually don't. I do agree that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. On an intermittent fasting day, my breakfast is at midday. Uh, and on a nomad day, my breakfast is actually at 5.36 p.m. in the evening. Uh, they also say eating at least five servings of fruit and vegetables every day is good, which I wouldn't say is a bad advice, but to have to force yourself to do that, um, conventional thinking has changed over the last uh, decade. Highly refined and deep fat food are a sometimes treat and should only be eaten occasionally. I agree 100% with that. No arguments at all. Uh, it says do push-ups every day. And again, that's not bad advice to do some kind of physical exercise every day. So at the time of this test, my chronological age was 59 and five months. Longevity advantage had my DNA methylation age or my biological age at 52.04, which is around 52 years and three months. And the less accurate, biologicalage.com had me at 48, which is around 11 years younger. I think we can all agree that a test like the Horvath clock or like this longevity advantage that uses saliva or blood tests is going to be far more accurate than just asking questions. However, try to avoid companies that only test against a few epigenetic or blood markers. Um, epiage.com is one. They only look at less than 20 markers and look for companies that test against hundreds of thousands of markers. So you get a far more accurate biological age. It's also far more cost effective. So let's take a look at my overall progress. You can see in this graph here that my chronological age is in blue. That's always going to be increasing because um, until the last one, I'm always going to be getting a birthday once a year. You can see here in red my biological age. You can see a considerable gap now between my chronological and biological, which is what I want to have. It's a, it's a large gap. And you can see from the time before when my creatinine was not under control, you can see the smaller distance there between my biological age and my chronological age, which is not what I want. Um, I think this highlights the reason that I take blood tests every three months um, and then I use those blood tests to work out my biological age. Although my creatinine was slightly out of range when I had this blood test taken in, it was, it was high. If I hadn't have had the blood test, I would not have known because I felt fine. I was still going to CrossFit. I was still up and about. My energy levels were fine. Um, I didn't know that underlying there was something that was slightly wrong in this area here. Um, and if I'd only had one blood test and I'd gone to the doctor, they would have said, this looks a bit disturbing. We'll, we'll take another test in a while. But because I've got 
a whole um, stock of blood tests going back now, I think four, maybe three, maybe four and a half years, it's a lot easier to see that there was something that was definitely that had definitely changed. And that was that I'd started taking creatine again and that I was eating beef um, steak in particular um, three, four times a week because I wanted to get my vitamin B12 up. So it's a balancing act. And unless you take blood tests regularly, it's like a sleep monitor going to bed at 10 and waking up at six. You don't know how much quality sleep you've got. You just know that you were probably sleeping fairly well between 10 and um, 10 and six. This taking a, a blood test shows me that although I was feeling fine, my creatinine levels were high, but also it was uh, it was having a direct negative effect on my biological age, which is not the reason I'm doing this experiment. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So a much better result this time than last time. And I think definitely down to the reduction or bringing my creatinine levels back down into reference range. And that being helped by me stopping taking creatine as a supplement and reducing ever so slightly my red meat intake. Um, I've upped my red meat intake slightly in that I've found somewhere now where I can get ground beef so I can start to make my own beef burgers again. Um, ribeye steaks, which is my favourite, still very expensive here, so I shan't be indulging in those anytime soon. Um, so if you've had a blood test done recently and it covers the six markers or the nine markers that you need for longevity advantage, then I urge you to do a biological age test. What have you got to lose? If you can't or you don't want to take a blood test, then have a look at biologicalage.com uh, answer the questions and then get a rough idea of what your biological age is with with regard to your chronological age. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing your comments in the YouTube video comment section. As always, please take care and stay safe until we meet again.